Sunday, which is the day that the Lord poured out his Holy Spirit upon his church and we became the church. It's a wonderful day. It's a day we celebrate <coughs> worldwide, not just at Atlanta Foursquare Church, not just a Foursquare Church, but his church worldwide celebrates this day and remembers it as a day of our beginning. We come here this morning because we want to what? We want to experience his presence. And his presence is here. We come here this morning because we want to hear him speak to our hearts, to our souls, to our bodies, to our minds. And, and, and he has already spoken. He is speaking even now in your hearts. And we come here because this is a particularly significant Pentecost in the history of this church uh, because we have our new pastors who are going to be with us and they're here with us now. And I want to invite Christy and I want to invite Nate um, to come forward and um, I ask you to open your hearts to them because the Lord has anointed them and has appointed them as pastors for this next season. And so brother and sister, I just want to say this. We welcome we welcome you. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. That's right. Thank you, Pastor Mike and Pastor Tanner. We have been so warmly received already. We had a chance to um, be with Mike and Tanner in their home a couple weeks ago, and then we met with the council. An amazing group of people. Stay close. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we're local. We uh, live in Victorville. And we work during the week, just like y'all do. And we've been serving at New Life Chapel in Hesperia for several years. And uh, God has just had us on an amazing journey. And this is where he's brought us to. And we're really excited to be a part of this church family. And do you want, do you want to say? Good morning, everyone. Uh, like Pastor said, my name's Nate Montes. Uh, I'm her husband. <laughs> and uh, we are very grateful for this opportunity uh, to be your pastors and we're grateful to have you as our church and um, they know the love that we've already been receiving from you and you poured that out and we've been praying almost constantly we've prayed, we've come to the church and prayed around you, prayed around the ground around you um, and uh, like Genesis 15 6 says uh, Abraham believed the Lord, and the Lord counted to him as righteousness. And um, Abram had that love for God before there was a Bible. And uh, that faith, like 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 it says in Romans, faith of the love, but the greatest of these is love. And that is what we feel for you. And that is what we heal from. And that is what we want to continue to grow in this church from the mighty work that container have done and for that we are grateful and I just I just had a word um, as I was meditating on the fact that this is Pentecost Sunday so if I could just share just for a couple minutes you know I hadn't really realized the history of Pentecost and um, in a four square church we are very very aware of the power of the Holy Spirit empowerment of the Holy Spirit, the presence of the Holy Spirit in our lives. But do you know God's promise of his presence went all the way back even to the Old Testament, and there was festivals and feasts that the children of Israel were commanded to keep. And one of those was the Festival of Weeks, which was two things. It was a celebration of the end of the wheat harvest, and it also was the remembrance of the giving of the Torah. And so Shavuot is when the children of Israel would commemorate receiving the Torah. And Deuteronomy 16, verse 15, it says, For seven days celebrate the festival to the Lord your God in the place the Lord will choose. For the Lord your God will bless you in all your harvest and in all the works of your hands, and your joy will be complete. And here's what the Lord was speaking to me right now in this season of our life is that God's intention is that we would have 
the fullness of all that he is. The fullness of his presence, the fullness of his peace, and the fullness of joy. And if you're like us, right, the last year and a half, it's been a weary season. It's been a hard season. There's been so much change. And we're still going to be going through transition as a church family. New is hard sometimes. But here's the thing that we hold on to. God promises us his presence. And in his presence, because here's what's in Acts chapter 2. After the Holy Spirit comes, it says, In his presence is fullness of joy. Fullness of joy. And so I want to release over our church family here. God intends for us to have fullness of joy in his presence. And so if together, if we will seek his presence above anything else, if we'll just go after Jesus, go after Jesus, he will be faithful to bring us his joy. In his presence is fullness of joy. And there's a full circle from the Old Testament to the New Testament where God fulfills his promises. He keeps his word. He's a faithful God. That if we go after him, if we stay open to him, we will have the fullness of joy in his presence. So we want to bless you with that word today. Thank you. We're excited for what God's doing. And we are excited to be able to walk with you. We're going to do life together. And, uh, and, and we're going to experience God's faithfulness in that because he is all that we need and he's more than enough. So God bless you. It's, it's a privilege to be with you today and moving forward with you. Pastor Mike. Listen, the Lord is generous to this church. We're small, but we're big in his heart. If there's evidence of that, it's this. And what he's done over the past decades, yes, amen. But it's also right now, you can see that God loves Adelanto Foursquare Church. We should be thankful for that. We should just bless him and we know what it is to be in his presence. And to have him speak a word through its pastors that the next season is a season of, of, of not only his presence, but the, the fullness of his joy. Can we not smile? <laughs> It is a great thing that God is doing. I know that we're in the midst of a lot of testing right now. And um, but there is no greater witness than in the midst of that testing, brother, that there's a smile on our face because we know the Lord is with us every step of that way. And so we are rejoicing in him. And we have our hearts ready because we're rejoicing in him to hear his word. Amen. The red word today starts with Acts chapter 2, of course. When the day of Pentecost had arrived, they were all together in one place. And suddenly there came from heaven a sound like a mighty rushing wind that filled the entire house, that place where they were sitting. And divided tongues as a fire appeared to them and rested on each one of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and they began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Amen. I want to go to Joel chapter 2. This is the prophecy of that day given by the prophet speaking about that Pentecost. He says, And it shall come to pass 
afterwards, that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams. Your young men shall see visions. And even on the male and female servants in those days, I will pour out my spirit. And I will show wonders on the heavens, in the heavens and on the earth, blood and fire and columns of smoke. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the great and awesome day when the Lord comes. And it shall come to pass that everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Amen. And then from John chapter 16, our our gospel passage. Starting with verse 4 and then going to verse 11. Jesus said this, I did not say these things to you from the beginning because I was with you. But now I'm going to him who sent me and none of you ask me, where are you going? But because I've said these things to you, sorrow has filled your heart. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away, for I do not go away, for if I do not go away, the helper will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. And when he comes, he will convict the world concerning sin and righteousness and judgment. Concerning sin, because they do not believe in me. Concerning righteousness, because I go to the Father, and you will see me no longer. And concerning judgment, because the ruler of this world is already judged. Amen. Father, speak to us by your Holy Spirit. This moment, this day, this people, that we might know your truth, Lord, and that we might follow you and live it. We ask that you would soften those places in our heart where we're resistant. And Lord, that our hearts would be ready for what you want to say to us this morning. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, today is special because this is not the usual Sunday. Every Sunday is special, but this is more than special. This is Pentecost. Today is important because what is said and what will happen here today will be marked down for eternity. It's significant from the side of heaven what happens here today. The things that are decided in the heart, the things that are said yes to, the things that are sealed upon our lives because we say amen. Listen, those things are important from now and forever. And today is vital. A moment when our desperate need is met by the perfect will of God. Special, important, vital. Listen, today is Pentecost, the birthday of the church. Now, we identify ourselves, Atalanta Foursquare Church, as a Pentecostal church. We are a Pentecostal people. The gathering of God's people here in Atalanta that believes in God's promise of the Holy Spirit. We believe it for ourselves, for our children, for our children's children. We believe it. We look back to Acts chapter 2 as our beginning and believe that what the followers of Christ experienced there in that place, in that particular day, at that particular time, is even for us, that we may experience it here in our own time and space. It's for us. It's just not a recording of history, but it is God's gift, God's promise to us presently. We are <coughs> Pentecostal. You don't hear me say that very often. But our life, who we are, how we live together, how we love each other, listen, it's all Pentecostal. And we believe that the filling of the Holy Spirit given them is just as necessary for us today. We need the Holy Spirit, church. Yes. It comes down to this, if the church is going to be faithful to its God-given intended purpose, then it needs the Holy Spirit. We are Pentecostal. Be proud of that. Wear it. 
By Pentecostal, we, we believe that the gift of the Holy Spirit is for us here now in this place, in this generation, with all of its gifts, with all of its empowerment, with all of its love. You see, because the church is called to love one another, right? We're called to love one another. But listen, church, if you've heard anything this last season, you should know this, that that's a big thing. It's not a small thing. It costs us a lot to love one another. And quite simply, you're just not up to it. Not in yourself. You're not strong enough to pull it off in yourself to love one another. And then if, if that doesn't um, change the way you see things, listen, you're called to love those who hate you, who persecute you, who are your enemies. You're called to hate the very ones who, who revile you. And I just want to tell you, without any shadow of a doubt, I know this is true. You're not strong enough. You don't have it in you to do this. And, and, and then we're called to love God with all that we have. All that is us, even as Jesus loved us from the cross and as he walked. But, but as Jesus loved us, we're, we're called to love to that same degree. One another, our enemies everyone that we come in contact with, we're called to love them in such a way and we're called to love God in, the, in, in that way where we lay everything down, where we're ready to just give up everything for the sake of that love. We're called to love God to that extent. But listen, church, you're simply not good enough. You're not strong enough. You're not capable of doing this work of love. You're not not strong enough to love, not smart enough to speak, you're not capable capable enough to live for Christ, not willing enough to die for him, except by the promise of the Holy Spirit. You see, we need, let me say it again, we need the Holy Spirit. We need the Holy Spirit to fill us, to baptize us, to empower us, to enable us, if we're going to be the people that God has called us to. We are a church who has lived through the generations. And I've seen the Holy Spirit work amongst us. I've seen him speak through you to me. Words of admonition, words of encouragement, words of warning. I've heard the Lord speak from the body of the church to its pastor. And, and, and you've heard the Lord speak to us through the read word, through the preached word, through his word, you have heard the Lord speak to us. It is a prophetic word given by the Holy Spirit that speaks to you in your context, context and in your situation. And continuously the Lord has spoken to us. He does not withhold his voice, but he speaks through the work of the Holy Spirit to his, through his church today. And I believe with all my heart that God's intended purpose for us, it is not his way of teasing us to say, this is what I call you, but then you're incapable, incapable of doing this, so you're just going to fail. That's not, that's not his way. I am calling you to do this, but you must depend upon me and my empowering, and my filling your life. That you may participate in the very, very divine life that we have through Christ Jesus. See, Listen, he's called us to love, and he wants to empower you to love. To love one another. To love your enemy. To love those who revile you. And to love him. He wants to baptize you in his spirit of love. The gift of the Holy Spirit's empowering us to love is absolutely necessary for the church today. You see in Acts, Acts chapter 2, did you, did you hear this? I, I try to emphasize it. I, I don't do this haphazardly. When I read it, I tried to emphasize one word. 
They were all in one place. They were all in one place together, praying, waiting for God to do as he had said, as he had promised. And together as the church, together, together <laughs> as the church, they received the Holy Spirit. We're gathered here today. We're together in one place. We, we come anticipating that God will do something, that God will say something, that God will move, that he will pour out himself upon us. Our very prayer that we prayed at the beginning was, Lord, come do what you want. <coughs> we surrender to his will, and his will is that he would empower you to become that woman, to become that man, to become that wife, to become that husband, to become that parent, to become that follower of Christ that he's called you to be. They received the Holy Spirit together as the church. You see, I, I really do believe that that filling of the Holy Spirit, the work of the Holy Spirit is a church thing. Not just a Mike thing, just not a Tana thing, not just a Nate thing. It's a, it's a church thing. The Lord pours himself out on us as we are together. And when he pours himself out upon his church, the very foundations of the earth tremble. And the very, the very room they were in was filled with a mighty <coughs> rushing wind. Even tongues of fire fell upon them. And they all saw it. And they spoke with other tongues. Something that hadn't happened before. See? Because when we start working with the Holy Spirit, let's just, we just need to know this right at the beginning. When we start submitting and working with, being filled with, being led by the Holy Spirit, listen, we're going to find ourselves going in places we've never gone before. Because you can't put God in a box. You never know what he's going to do next, but I, I can tell you from experience, that's all good. It's all wonderful. It may be unexpected. It may be out of the box. It may be something totally different than has ever happened before, but it's something which is needed, and it is something which is timely, and it is something which is of him. Because when he gives, he always gives of himself. You see, they received the Holy Spirit in Acts chapter 2. But here's something I want you to see and understand again. In Acts chapter 4, verse 31, they received the Holy Spirit again. When? When they were gathered as a church. It, it says, and when they had prayed, they were praying for a very, very specific thing, a specific context. But when they had finished praying, the place in which they had gathered together was shaken. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit, and they continued to speak the word of God with boldness. You see, it happened again, first in Acts chapter 2, then in Acts chapter 4, to the same people. It happened again, and then it happens even again in Acts chapter 10. In Acts chapter 10, you have Peter being sent by God to a particular family, uh, a righteous man, a Gentile, a righteous Gentile. Again, God is working outside of the box, isn't he? A righteous Gentile, a Roman soldier, a Roman. Peter is sent to him and told to speak the good news. Peter had never preached and never spoken to those who were outside the Jewish faith about who Jesus was. But he goes to this family, and as he is preaching, the Holy Spirit falls upon them, and the whole family, all at once, begins speaking in tongues and are filled with the Holy Spirit. And Peter, being the sensible Holy Spirit guy he was, 
immediately says, what am I to do except baptize them? Because they obviously have Jesus, mm. right? So he's obedient. He's doing it outside the box. He's breaking all conventions. He's breaking all norms. But it doesn't matter because this is where the Lord is going. This is where the Lord has led him. And if the Lord wills it, then so be it. And so he, he prays for them. And the Gentile church is, is born. And the idea that God has come to save not just the Jews, but the whole world is starting to come forth. See, it happened in the church. It happened in the church. And then the church was added on to. And at every step, the Holy Spirit is there pouring himself out upon the church at the very heart of what church is and is intended to be is the person of the Holy Spirit. He is the church's, please listen to me, this is what I want to say more than anything else. The Holy Spirit is the church's greatest need. Mm. Right now, we don't need Listen, your pastors are going to come in, they're going to have great ideas, and they're going to implement new things, new strategies, and it's, it's going to happen. It, it ought to happen. I, I know it will happen, you know. But please hear what I'm saying in the spirit that it's intended. What the church needs, what their pastors need, what we all need is, is more of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We need more of Jesus, the spirit of Jesus, the Holy Spirit. Because it's only in the Holy Spirit that you find a man like me can stand up here and say something and you walk away and I said, and you would say, I feel like God has spoken. You know, and that's what we believe, isn't it? Isn't that why we come to church, to hear God speak to us? And he speaks to us through frail human beings, flawed human beings, like your pastors, like your pastors, like your pastor, like your brother, like your wife, like your husband. We all know how messed up we are. We, know, we all know how prone to sin we are. We all know how selfish we can be. But God uses people such as us to speak his word by the power of the Holy Spirit because you don't have it in you. But the Spirit lives in you and he knows the heart of the Father. You see? Now I know that when I crouch the promise of God's Holy Spirit in terms of the church, I think sometimes we're tempted to relegate that promise to when we meet together. And then it becomes pastor's job to bring the Holy Spirit. Or it becomes, you know, it becomes us, not me. And I think that's a mistake. It is a church thing. I think sometimes by saying that, though, we want to say it's not a me thing. And that's wrong. Because that thinking's backwards. Because, listen, the church is you. When you go into those places throughout the week, you take, you the, you're, you're the church there. And you take this place with you, the Holy Spirit with you. I think that's backwards because, listen, it's backwards because, listen, it starts with you, with you. The way for we to be fulfilled, to be faithful, the way for us to be faithful, is for first you being faithful. We wait for God's promise together because our life is together. So what you do, listen, it matters to me. It impacts me. Haven't you noticed that when you're with your brothers and sisters who are trying their utmost to follow him, maybe they're struggling and maybe they're not they're, maybe they're they're really just stumbling forward. That's what I said this morning to my sister. It's just, you know, she goes, I know you got to get into the stream of things or in the line of things. I go, I'm just kind of like stumbling after Jesus, <laughs> you know. But he takes those feeble, stumbling steps and he makes them eternally significant. 
if you are filled with the Holy Spirit, then we are made stronger in our love, our service, our worship together. That's what it comes down to. So it's necessary for you to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Uh, maybe there's no better place of seeing this than looking at Jesus himself. You see, Jesus came as a human being, didn't he? He came as a baby first, frail, um, ignorant, weak. But he grew up and he became a young man. And, and as a young man who's called by God, what's the first thing he does? But he goes to his cousin John at the Jordan to be baptized. And that baptism was, even though it was a baptism of, of uh, renouncing of sin, even though he didn't have sin, he, he was identifying himself with our sin. And then as he is baptized by water, as he's coming up out of the Jordan, the Holy Spirit comes from heaven, it says, like the form of a dove, and alights on him and fills him. He's filled with the Holy Spirit at the very beginning of his ministry. Why? Because he's a human being, and that's what human beings are created for. We are created to receive God into our lives that we might become the people we are created to be. That we might be able to worship him in truth and in spirit. That we might be able to love one another by laying down our lives for each other. That happens and is made possible by the infilling of that spirit of love, the spirit of God, the Holy Spirit, which is the third person of the Trinity, the third person of God. So how can we love even as Christ loves us? Be filled with the Holy Spirit. Be filled. It's necessary for you to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Don't say you are Pentecostal. You belong to this church. That's who we are. We're Pentecostal. And that's our tradition. It's kind of like our family clan. You know. It makes us, it makes it means that we have certain gifts to give to the church at large. And the church has received that this last hundred years. We are living in a in a in a spirit or in a in a period where the Holy Spirit is becoming just like the enemy is becoming stronger in certain areas. Listen, the Holy Spirit is showing himself stronger and stronger and stronger today than he has since the time of the apostles. Mm -hmm. And you're a part of that. But you must be filled. Today my prayer for us is that we would be filled again with the Holy Spirit. His church. We also want to pray for our pastors. That they would be filled with the Holy Spirit. That they would be empowered by the Holy Spirit. That they would rely on the Holy Spirit. Because you're not here to hear any happy thoughts from Pastor Mike or from Pastor Christie or Pastor Kane or Pastor Nate. You don't need any more happy thoughts. You can turn on Oprah. <laughs> well, you can. I, I'm not saying anything against Oprah. She has, she has good thoughts, happy thoughts. <laughs> but you've come here because you want to hear God speak to you. Yeah. See, there's a difference. And the only way that happens is if the Holy Spirit is at the very center of all that we do. So, receive this. Just open up your hands, your heart to the Lord. Receive this. Father, in your name. It's your appointed one here. I pray that you have filled your church with your Holy Spirit. Lord, that you would shake the foundations of this place. That that which is hard would be overturned and that which is soft to you would be nurtured. I pray that your Holy Spirit would look into the hearts of your children and Lord, begin to fill it. Lord, fill us with your words that we would speak your words with boldness. Lord, give us your knowledge. 
that we would know how to pray in those situations that are hard, that are tough. Lord, in your name, empower us and speak to us the way to go. Empower us the things to do, Lord, that we would know that what we do is just not for this season, but it has significance for all eternity. Lord, that today would matter from now and forever. So, Father, in your name, I just pray that you would fill your church with your Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, we worship you, we praise you, and we magnify your name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.